If you've been following this channel for a while, I've been trying to find the best way to control my smart TV. I have built Home Assistant custom remotes, I've installed smart wall panels, and I've tried to use my voice. Today I'm gonna to give you my personal experience of the Sofa Baton X1, universal remote, which I've sponsored this video. This video will be split into three parts. How this product can benefit you, my personal experience with the product, and the third part of the video, we're gonna talk about if this is the right option for you. This remote is trying to make your life easier by eliminating the use of multiple remotes in your living room home entertainment setup. The device is quite straightforward to set up. It comes with a hub, and this hub needs to be connected up to power. The remote communicates to the hub, and then the hub sends the signals and the communication to the devices. It does that three different ways via IR, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now Wi-Fi is only limited to a certain amount of devices and you see that in the app. At the time of recording you have the Sonos, Philips Hue and Roku. The Surfer Baton X1 Universal Remote has 1000 milliamp hour of battery so that actually means that you can actually leave it quite a while without charging it. I've had it for three weeks and I just left it on the whole time and actually I got down to two bars and then when I started using it more to test it for the actual video it went down to one bar but because it's USB-C you can sort of charge it and it's, it's quite quick to, to charge up again. So I, I love this uh, USB-C in remote controls instead of having traditional uh, remote controls like this one where you have the batteries inside which if you have like for example small kids then this can be actual danger for them. One of the important things with universal remotes is their compatibility. So the number of devices that they can you can actually integrate into the remote. You can actually integrate around 50 60 devices which is a huge amount of devices if you have that many entertainment devices in one house that is a lot. It's got a huge database of like 400,000 potential devices that you could connect to their system. Clearly I can't review devices I don't own so in this video will be particularly tailored to LG, this LG OLED TV that I own, the PlayStation 5, Apple TV 4K and the Sonar speaker and Philips Hue lights. So it also controls lights and sound. So to set up this device, you're going to need to download the app. You're going to need an email address to register. I've used the Apple feature that allows me to hide my email address. So it's a bit of a relay. So I'm not sharing my original email address out to companies. Once you've got yourself registered, update the firmware, connect the hub up, and then you'll, it'll be super easy. Basically, you connect the hub to Wi-Fi first. I've connected it to my IoT, uh, but if you don't know what that is or what that means, don't worry, just connect it to your normal Wi-Fi. Then the remote will start syncing with the device. At this stage, you can add all of your devices. This will be different depending on what type of connection you need to achieve. So just to give an idea, my PlayStation 5 and my Apple TV, I use the Bluetooth connection, Wi-Fi, there's only a few listed, for example, in my example, Sonos and Philips Hue. I use the infrared for the LG OLED C2 TV that I have and Bluetooth also for the PlayStation 5. Now all of them are relatively straightforward so take your time regardless to test all of the buttons because each device can be slightly different. The good thing is that you can remap buttons on the physical remote to certain different things that happen in the background but the auto mapping is pretty good. So for example, on the LG TV, it was pretty, pretty much a success. For PlayStation 5, I had to change the OK button to the X on the controller because with the PlayStation 5, you uh, press the X to uh, confirm and give OK. So I had to remap that, but I was pretty straightforward. The Apple TV also was pretty good too. I was pretty happy with that. Let me give you now a hands-on demo of how to actually use the remote. The way you can figure out this device we can split it in two parts. We've got the top part that goes from this off and back button, the LCD display and the screen wheel. And then you've got the second part, which is basically all of your standard remote. So the actually first part is the uh, interesting part of this software button. So over here, you can switch it off. Here you can go back and here you've got your navigation. So what you can do 
is that you can uh, kick off activities. So for example, play television, play PlayStation or whatever you've got. Um, so it will automatically turn your AV receiver, all of your devices um, into, on, into a specific pattern that you can set in the app. And you've got your devices to control your specific devices. So uh, LG, Apple, PlayStation, for example. And you just scroll like this. So you don't use any of these buttons at this stage. When you've clicked, so you can see the LG uh, is highlighted green. At this stage now, any command you press, anything you press from here bottom will be sent to the TV and anything else is the actual remote of the remote, if that makes sense at all. So you just hard tap to select another device like so. And at this stage, you click on it and you can see all of the potential type, different type of um, things and configurations you can actually send to the receiver. You can see volume up, volume down, reverse, play, pause, mute. And then this button over here actually just helps with this LCD menu, okay? So if you switch in between using, uh, sending commands to LG or Apple, this is how you do it. And then your off button over here, will just turn the remote off so it keeps the battery uh, and then you can always recharge it right here. You've got your USB charging port. So your off button over here um, is to turn off your activities. So this is gives you a big nice off button for uh, to switch everything off. And you've got uh, over here a last option with your set where you can sync this, um, you can put the LCD to sleep, you can restart it and you can check the firmware version. So let's talk about the specifics of my experience. So my son has started using physical remote, he's about to be six. When I presented this to him, he was okay with it at the beginning, but he's okay to the point that I have selected the device for him in the surfer button. But because he is, um, he's just starting to learn how to read, you do need to know how to read. This sounds gonna sound really obvious, but you do need to know how to read to actually change and the configuration on this remote. The other thing to, do, to think of is if you take this Apple TV remote, for example, this will have things like voice control, it will have things like super fast scrolling, but this does do the job. So for majority of the times on Apple TV, you'll probably be okay with the suffer button. Again, if you want to do more advanced things like clearly typing uh, things in, you need to use your mobile phone as you would normally. The best success I've found is with the LG remote. This really is a complete replacement. This probably could, I could probably put this away um, unless it was for that use case that I mentioned earlier. This could disappear and this is actually not bad. The weight, weight wise are pretty similar also. Um, just that this LG one has slightly different ergonomics in terms of how you hold it compared to this one. So, but this is going to be up to your own preference. And the weirdest one is going to be the PlayStation 5. So with Bluetooth devices, you do need to connect. You need the original device to activate the software button. The reason why is because you need to go on the menus and add a Bluetooth accessory. And clearly this is uh, this device over here, the Surfer but Button X1 is not made for gaming. So you still need the controller around regardless. I've also found that to turn it on, the only way to turn it on is still using this controller. I have not been able to turn it on with the button. Can navigate the menu, can uh, launch apps. However, when you've, you've launched a game or an app, it doesn't seem to be able to navigate across it. This could be me that I need to just work more on trying to figure out how to set it up but it didn't auto set up. So just to note that for uh, in case this happens to you. If you're a smart home enthusiast, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy the content on this channel. So if you do, please give this a like and subscribe. We've talked about what this device is. We've talked about my personal experience with the device. Now let's talk about you. Let's talk about is this the right device for you? And what is my final take on this device? The final take is the more devices you have in your system, in your environment, the more long it will take you to set up initially because you have to do it device by device and test it all. However, thanks to activities, once you have activity set up, which is basically a way of saying, turn my TV, put my AV receiver on this sound mode, switch the input to HDMI, turn my whatever system on, it will all sync together, right? And it will give you that great experience of turning on, turning off. 
You can then sync those activities into your voice assistant, the Alexa's voice assistant, and you can control it even without the software button itself. And clearly the more you devices you have, the more you know, effort you take away. The other big thing is the fact that you can recharge this and there's so many remotes out there that are still battery powered. So this is a great advantage. Another thing that I like is that you can also control your lights. So it's not common to see remote controls that get shipped with TVs that can control Philips Hue lights or can control Sonos systems, which are very popular. And I was quite impressed with the ease of use of the system and it was easy to set up, it was easy to understand and I really didn't have to do much research to figure out what to do next and where to unblock myself. Full disclaimer, clearly this is a sponsored video, which I mentioned in the beginning, but the other disclaimer is that I've owned another similar device like a Harmony a Hub, and this was years ago. And I know many of you that are watching this video, you probably are familiar with Harmony and have had or have a Harmony remote. So if you've had one like that, you are familiar with this process and you sort of it's sort of the same thing, so it's sort of easy to set up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your comment section in the comment section down below what you thought about the product and the video. And I'll see you in my next smart home video, which you'll find over here. See ya, ciao.